Galimera from San Francisco, George. Good, good morning. Just going to set up a uh, chat window. I was uh, working on my grip, I was working on landing zones, I was working on, uh, on the actual flight. Thank you. Um, so today I'm going to be trying exactly the same thing. in the morning. Excellent way to start. All right, so I'm thinking of doing a video which is very different from what uh, I think you should be following somebody like 36 Hook Press who is showing grips and, uh, <coughs> and tosses. Um, I don't know if anybody would be interested if you have a specific... Good morning, good morning. Uh, skill. I don't know if anybody would be interested to know. Okay, you have the you have the grip, you have the toss, you have the landing zone, and then you have the results. Um, I don't know if anybody would be interested to know uh, how you interpret the results because it's it's just not doing your best and then prepare for the next shot. It's doing your best, seeing the result, <clears throat> and saying, okay, I know what's going on. I know what went wrong. So, yeah, I'm probably going to do that. Even when I'm ready. <laughs> if people trust my throw, if people, you know, trust my opinion, I'm not trying to I'll pass it on to anybody. That's out. Maybe the rest here. Nine is a point in soft axis uh, left. So, three, one, four, secondary. So basically, I've been working on this idea. Good morning. Good morning, Sumi. I've been working on this idea since yesterday, um, off camera. Um, the idea is that. How much do you need? How much? How much grip do you need? How much pressure do you need on the dice? Uh, just enough. That's the answer. And uh, this is not me saying this. This is uh, somebody who is actually helping me develop my grip. How much pressure do you need on the on the dice? Just enough. Just enough for what? There is no real answer, but it's just enough. For them to be held in your hand very lightly or for them to slip out of your hands very lightly then the next question is how much uh, momentum do you need the answer just enough 
just enough what? Just enough momentum to get them to that side of the table and to hit the back wall. That's how much. How much spin do I need? Just enough to counteract certain conditions of the table, whether it's a bouncy surface or whatever. So, last night I was working, I think I did over 100 uh, tosses on my own, just trying to answer this question, what is just enough? So for everybody it's going to be a different answer, but it's going to be part of your mechanics, I said. 369, now it's secondary, it's on axis secondary. Is to drift both dice of axis. So basically, I'm not doing a good job with my follow through. These are the type of things that I, I would love to talk about with people. Um, what actually goes wrong and how you can correct them. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, three, four. I still have uh, the left eye misbehaving. So one, three, four is off axis. Try and keep it on axis. That's on. One, two, three, four, two. Nope. <coughs> Drift. Bouncing tables are just tough, unfortunately, when I clap my clothes because you know it's a bouncing table. And it's just random. My girlfriend and I just get beat up there. All the time, 90% of people lose at that table. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, there are two ways to approach a bouncy table, in my opinion. Please feel free to disagree with me. One of them is with very low flight. I think uh, I'm demonstrating this today. That's out. One, two, three, one, two, three. That's a five, one, six primary. Now it's just me fixing. Uh, <coughs> my grip and I will show you what I've done we just mark it first when I came down on the dice first first of all I always go through the same step I press my fingers down because I'm not used to this three finger grip so I have to go through the motions every time I'm not comfortable making my fingers straight uh, and then I come up the difference is now I'm coming, I'm sliding my fingers down and up until I find a spot where I say, yeah, I'm comfortable to throw the dice from here. Too high, maybe it's not too comfortable for me yet. Too low, it's just not a three finger grip, I might as well be a random shooter. So I do this exercise, I come down, make sure my, my fingers are level with each other and then slightly down 
The next thing I do is how much energy do I need to get them to the back wall? So my pendulum is adjusted accordingly. And believe it or not, your brain is doing all these exercises. So that's one way to approach a bouncy table. The other one, uh, the other one has to do with flight. Flight can be one of two things. It can be a low flight, like I just showed you, flight track like this. They have energy to bounce like so and come back. Or it can be like this. I don't think you will see this, but let me just uh, try. All right. They come high, very high, bounce here, very close to the back wall, get trapped here and die. Uh, this is what I used to do, that was, you know, with my two finger grip, I think I was very good at uh, high flight and die, basically that's what they name these. So, um, let me just uh, adjust the camera back down. Alright, so, yeah, basically you have two ways to approach the table, it's either with a high flight, plenty of backspin. Um, to absorb a lot of the energy that is coming up. The high angle basically forces most of that energy when it comes down to be counteracted by the felt itself. So you have a, a force which is coming down this way as opposed to a force coming down this way. So you're creating less dispersion force when they hit this. So they come down, bounce up, get trapped here on the underneath of these uh, uh, pyramids, and they die. They just get slammed down onto the foot, onto the belt. All right, so we have one, two, three, four, we only have three. I do apologize, I do take very long when I set the dice because I'm a novice at this uh, grip. I'm still trying to feel comfortable after two months or three months now. Dice out. Three, five, eight. The right dice was off axis. <coughs> So if it was on axis, it would have been an ace. Dice up. One, five, six, both dice, both axes. All right, that was a problem mostly with my follow through, I would say. You know that kind of funny, I try the high flat approach to them not to pull in your leg, but they don't, they don't. It was too high and I have to keep it low. Told me, okay, they told me it's too high. Um, I honestly don't know what to say to that. Um, because if they, if they know that it's going to help you, they'll obviously try and, you know, make the rule. But just don't make it way too high. I think um, they have this rule that it has to be at uh, Stickman's eye level or something like that, at the highest. I've read it somewhere, I'm not sure. Tyson. Thank you. 
That was me, full of full of rubbish, 6.5, drift, both dice. What do I mean by drift? Drift and drift. We are back into position. So, one, two, three. Ace, four, five. Still not getting there. First to its name. Aces. It's probably the small. But every dealer is a different height. <laughs> yeah, I actually, you're so right, Sui. And uh, as soon as I said it, I, I thought, uh, okay, what if they. Yeah, what well, if they see you throwing like so, and uh, the next dealer is a dwarf? I, I don't mean to, you know, I'm not that way inclined to badmouth anybody, but uh, you're right. What if the next dealer is short? Stickman, sorry. Uh, he will probably have a, a problem, you know, with his stick reaching over. That is out. Hard four. That's the point. We're off axis on the right. So, three, six, nine, that's uh, secondary on axis. Um, let's see if I can make this better. Should be somewhere here, yeah. Six nine is a new point. Thanks out. Aces, getting quite a few of those, unnecessarily I would say. <laughs> That's out. Cars 12 for my friend Midnight Madness. What are your thoughts on those perfect throws that you feel, but then it's a seven? I can never figure those out. <clears throat> I think quite a few people are. Quite a few people have mentioned this to me. Um, 
And you're right, there are some, some throws, some tosses that are unexpected uh, results. And I think my answer is always the same. Uh, my late father was uh, always, you know, a person of, uh, uh, who studied hard and all that in his life. And he told me, if you walk into an exam, and you walk out and you say, I really nailed it, I really killed it, and then you don't pass, it means that you never knew your stuff to begin with. The same goes with uh, somebody who walks into an exam and says, oh my God, I failed it, and he gets a 60, 70. Good morning, good morning. So basically the idea is this. Uh, you need to immerse yourself kind of fully into, into the game. Immerse yourself fully into uh, uh, this exercise of throwing dice, um, if you can in order to start understanding where you could go wrong, even with a perfect toss. Uh, and sometimes I see perfect tosses and they're four, three, sevens, and I kind of feel happy about it because for me, this is on axis double pitch. Uh, there are times though that I feel I did enough and it's a 257 and then I look back at the video and I say well it wasn't the perfect toss because there was interaction from the right wall or whatever so uh, the perfect toss I don't think it exists to be honest with you I mean I've done a slow-mo video where I watched it um, it was uh, the uh, the dice in the air just uh, rotated together, very close together, landed perfectly on axis. That was a perfect toss. I think it was a hard six or something like that. But I didn't predict that at the time. Three, two, three, six, dice up. That's a two, six, eight primary. Usually if I hold my, uh, my dice too long, <laughs> it's a seven, but like this one was a primary hit. Two, six, eight. So let me just see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, That's a six to eight. Unlike the other one, this is an explosion of both dice. You don't want that. Good morning, Lou. How are you? I think I said that, but <laughs> he won't mind. So, this is what I don't like. So the dice ended up in a 6 to 8, which is an explosion. So it means that my dice traveled, opened like so, caught the edges and exploded outwards. Now it's this is part of the reason why I use a 3V set, because if you get this sort of uh, dice action in a hardware set, that is a 6-1. When you throw enough, you know when it feels so right on the throw, but you're right. There's no perfect throw that, and you're right. If it is on accident, then probably it's just bad luck. Yeah. Um, I would say there are some people that say that luck has very little to do with it. Um, for now, I'm not in that league. Um, I am I'm definitely, the more I learn about it, the more I practice about uh, you know, uh, the sport, I would say that I'm very far from being a very good shooter. Uh, 
but I am committed to trying to, you know, get to a level where I consider myself okay. Three, two, three, six, dice up. That was better, but it's, you know, aces. Too many of these today. So, let's see. It's kind of a drift, I would say. Semi drift. Let's feel comfortable with this grip. Dice out. Again, pieces. Now, <laughs> it's a 30 to 1. Good morning, Mark. How are you, buddy? It's a 30 to 1 to repeat this thing. I have four of them. Now, is it mechanics? I don't know. <laughs> I will say no. It's just uh, rubbish throws. Because I'm not trying to hit the aces. I think we need a 10 or something for the auto small, but that's irrelevant, that I said. Secondary hit, four, six, ten, and that's still too small. <laughs> Called it, but uh, didn't really want to get there. I think we're looking for the nine. Nice out. That was five, five, six down pitch. Check that landing zone for pits. It is a sport it takes practice and building on the basics to build the mechanics into muscle memory. Check that landing zone for, for pits. No, I actually, I actually had this, Mark, I actually had this laid um, relayed or I put felt underneath, two layers of felt to make it more bouncy because uh, I felt that some people were telling me uh, it's a very hard surface so I took it apart and relayed it with felt. We made sure that it was dead straight and uh, put the layout on top again. Dice out. Three, five, eight. I think this is annoying. Grip needs to be comfortable. Landing zone just enough to hit the back wall. <laughs> Six one. And that is the first seven. Six one is off axis.
Sahan, we do one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, five. Twelve left. That was a twenty-three roll with an ATS. Unintentional ATS. The good part was that we had, um, uh, I don't know, out of the 23, had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, kind of. This one was god awful. This one was too much, too much. Overproduced on the fours. So you can see I'm not that happy because I should be producing a few more inside numbers. So let's try and work on that, if we can. Dice out. That's a one four five. <clears throat> of course, ATS is always good. I, I do agree with you. You know, it's a novelty. And people need to realize that. Um, if you're serious about uh, shooting dice, uh, you have three priorities, I would say. Um, number one priority is not to seven up, whatever happens. Number two would be to align your shooting to the strategy that you're using. I never set you inside numbers. I never said you know anything else. Just align what you are trying to do, i.e. the strategy, with how you shoot. So you need the right results. And priority number three, which is you know, uh, I would say more of a novelty than anything else, is to try and be on the axis uh, that your dice are going to produce the results that you want for that strategy. It's not necessary, but these are the, you know, the fine tuning tools that I would consider necessary for someone to consider himself a good shooter. Dice out. One, two, three. That's a five, four, nine. Never forget the priorities. The priorities to not to actually seven up. The rest is just uh, novelty, you know, the ATS and whatever. And as you shoot more dice, you you will realize that uh, the people who came before us and they started doing these videos, they said, "Do not spend money on the." Proposition beds and all that. Three, two, three, six, dice out. Three, five, eight, that's off us. Um, they did say that. Do not spend your money on hops, on this part, that part. You know, be happy to get your seven to six. Uh, on the six and eight, be happy because you're not playing an endless game, you're playing a game which has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Dice out. Five, six, that pitch. Well, that's this. That's a one, three, four. Off axis.
Tại sao? It's a one, two, three drift. Both dice of axes. One, three, four. I do have a problem with the left eye imploding. Save vote this time because if it didn't implode, I would have a four, three, seven. So. So, for six ten on axis secondary. Oh, sorry, I, I missed I missed a few chip at lines. So okay, but it is always good. You are the most analytical of some in the nation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm actually sharing my own thoughts of why things happen and I think most people would, uh, would share with you the what happens. I try to find out the why it happened and uh, I think that is the most difficult question to answer and I'm still learning the why myself. Some of the interpretations you'll get from me are not mine. I cannot take credit for all the information that I'm, I'm giving you. Tyson. That was a different throw, basis. I think we had a 2 1, a 1. And a Maybe we're on the way if we hit a six to have another small, but uh, again, I'm just keeping a mental note because I'm sure I had a two one drift, I had a couple of one three fours, one four five. I don't want a one five six, I want a five one six. That was a split. Six three nine. Dice kissed and they split. That was a lucky one. Of axis. Of axis left. Dice out. Three five eight. Off axis right. Mm. All right. So different times got sticky <laughs> that's out
That's a two for six, so that's the small, I think. All right, we are at uh, 36 points. Well, that was two for six, right? Was it a two for six, guys? I got the two, I think, 12 for the, okay. Six we got, two we got, 12 for the tall, thanks, Mark. Um, but I think this was one of these. So we need the 12. Um, I'm not gonna bother because I am actually keeping track of my results. In order to get the 12, I need to go off axis, which I've been doing, but I'm not going to cause it, I'm going to let it happen. <laughs> and that's a 5 to 7. So, not a bad result for all. 5 2. That's, I believe it's 37. We have two sevens. SRR, SOR the same, uh, 18.5, but very poorly, 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 10, 11, 12, 12 out of 36, that would be 33%, I could easily be considered a random. Uh, the, the results on the inside hits. 5, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17. So you see, uh, even though I did well with this, um, was I efficient in profitability? Perhaps not. This is the only thing that helped me. So, Okay, we had uh, ATS, we had uh, a small, we needed a 12 for a 12 a second time, but you can't focus on these things. Uh, you have so many things going at, at, the, at the table that uh, in order to focus, uh, very truly, very true if I was playing the field. But this is, you know, this is a training video for, uh, for my, uh, I don't know, practice, you know, just the roles. Um, when you're at the table, in order to focus on hitting specific numbers, um, because you're focused so much and you're visualizing that number, the best thing for you to do, the very best thing for you to do in terms of betting, if you need the top for the ATS, why do you need those bets up? Take the place bets down. Focus on one thing. You know, you don't need that. You don't need the extra aggravation of losing money. When in fact, you must have scored the 5, the 6, the 8, the 9. So you're already in profit unless you put some like 500 on each of the, on the ATS. Then you know, it's important for you to recover those uh, amounts. So, yeah, I would be, that, that is being active with the table. That is actually reading the table and that is actually taking decisions which are predefined decisions that you have thought about before stepping up to the table. Now, one of them on the ATS would be, if you're happy with um, X amount of hits, just focus on hitting the ATS because that's your next target to hit it. And if you're a good shooter, you'll be changing dice sets and things like that, obviously to hit different numbers. Um, so the idea behind that is, you know, limit your exposure to the table, to your pass line and your ATS. Some people actually say, why don't you lay the, the number? Well, usually you cannot lay the 12, the 11, the aces or the three craps 
you just can't play them. And that's usually the case with the ATS, you're left with a difficult number to hit. Those 30 to 1 sort of, or 15 to 1 kind of numbers. Uh, so, limit the exposure. You have money. You definitely make money. Whatever you were playing here in the box numbers. You must have hit those. So yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's my beautiful start to the day. Thank you. All right, guys, any questions? Um, so have you played California Crafts? No, I have watched uh, my friend uh, Mel Loom Ho from Crafts Hawaii. He actually explains it well in, in, in a video. Please check it out. Um, and I tried to come up with uh, something um, for him to use uh, in terms of the dice sets that you need to use or what sort of results you should be aiming for in order to help decipher the end result. So um, California crafts basically is without, well you use dice but the dice then you have cards on the table which are used as a cipher to come up with the end result. And the way to actually work out how to be a good shooter in California crafts is to actually decipher those numbers and come up with uh, a set that will help you uh, work backwards and hit those numbers. Uh, it's much more difficult than people realize, but yeah, it's a three-step process to get to the set. And every time it changes. Therefore, you need to be an extremely good shooter. The only thing that works for you in California crafts is the hard ways. Um, I mean, hard eight, hard six, hard four, hard ten. Those are the easiest to interpret. And perhaps if, you, if you're going to be at the table where you have interpreted what the 8 is, uh, then try and hit the hard 8. So basically, you know, just develop a, a set which gives you most of the hard ways because the hard ways are never a set. They, they are always uh, an even number, um, whatever the cards are shown on the table. That's all I'm saying. All right, guys, so I don't know if anybody has anything else. I'm ready to go to work. It's not a casual day. It's a very tough day today. Um, this is George from Cyprus. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for joining me, Sumi, Big Lou, Mark Evans, Skill Luck. Um, I don't know who else is here. I have covered everyone. Thank you so much for being here. You, you too, Sally. You too. Have a, have a pleasant day ahead. I am already, you know, it's I think uh, 8.56 a.m. So it must be kind of 2 or 3 a.m. for you guys. Unless you're in uh, Hawaii. <laughs> which is 12 hours behind me, so that's uh, 8.57 p.m. All right, have a pleasant one. 2 a.m., oh my God, Lou. Uh, <laughs> respect, thank you. Have a, have a good one, guys. Dice out.